Good afternoon. I'm Rachel Davis with The Accidental and & Company, and this is our first video on the journey and hopefully shared experience of working through some of the exercises and habits of Twyla Tharp's Keeping It Moving. Um, it's a wonderful choreographer and dancer. She is 78 years old and wrote this book to share with um, the world, dancer or no dancer, um, to bring about growth and aging gracefully, to have peace in your life, but also excitement and to keep moving, which we need both physically and mentally. And I'm sharing this journey with you all one week at a time. I'm gonna use some of my background with dance and movement to explore her movements. And if you'd like to join me, you don't have to read the book to be a part of this. This is an accountability um, setup. This is um, and a, really a shared journey through um, some of the things she's teaching that I'd like to create for you all and work through um, myself as part of my goal to find a way to keep moving myself this year. So, welcome. Before we begin, I would like to add that I'll be using some improvisation. I'll be demonstrating experiences from her book and her um, exercises. These would be Twyla Tharps. And I may add some uh, expression to that from teachers that I've had, from training that I've had, and I want to uh, just make sure there's a public note that I am not claiming that these are all original to me um, and to cite my sources, so to speak, in the movement as we go. If at any point in this series you like one of the exercises and you want to know more about it or more um, about the depth of movement that I'm adding from, from my experience um, and training, please send me a message. I want to start by reading a section of her book to you. We don't lose youth. Youth stays put and we move on. We need to face the fact that aging will happen to us along with everybody else and just get on with it. Growing older is a strange stew of hope, despair, courage. Still, I think you will agree it is light years ahead of the alternative. I've danced my entire life and still do. I've spent time with many great performers. For these dancers and athletes, the passage of time presents mostly difficult realities. Jumps decline, speed diminishes, flexibility is challenged and a fear of decline and irrelevance starts early. For dancers, aging is ever in front of us as we work. We face it each time we enter the studio, one day older than the day before. This is true for more than just dancers. Whether we struggle to compare ourselves to coworkers, other people in the family, to compare our physique and or even our personalities and long for something different in ourselves, those things can impact us every day. So the pursuit here to begin, um, to begin our series, to begin our day today, is to think about contentment and what it might mean for you to be content within your own body, within your own skin, within your own mind, to begin approaching change because change happens. We cannot avoid it. We cannot cover it up. And our brains and our bodies need it. It's part of what keeps us alive is our ability to adapt to new things and new elements to the world. So in an approach to contentment, as we sit back here to begin the exercise, we're going to take a few moments to breathe and to contemplate. I'd like you to think about these words. What does it mean that we are confronted each day with 
what it means to have aging ever in front of us. To have it in whether it's important to you, whether aging is a value, or whether aging is some kind of sign of inadequacy. How can we come to a place of contentment now and for today to help us see change as something exciting, as something even hopeful and joyful? Before we get, begin breathing, Twyla Tharp writes about uh, a contraction. And in dance, a contraction is an inward movement. We contract into the space. And I'll scoot back a little bit. So as you take, you contract, you bend to come into yourself in the space. Contraction, she says, is not ir in inevitable. Contraction is not inevitable. The mind will follow the body's contraction. On this path, our concerns narrow down to the most elemental functions, what to eat, getting enough sleep, keeping an appointment. As we age with worry, when we age without contentment, we begin to contract into ourselves and life becomes survival. And we hope to use elements of dance and movement, breath and mindfulness to say that contraction is not inevitable. It is not something that has to come and you can't avoid it. Like time, time we can't avoid, but contraction we don't have to. And so in contraction, we can also expand back into our space wherever we are, no matter what's happening in life. So with that precursor, let's begin. Take a moment to sit comfortably. I'm sitting cross-legged. You can sit on your knees. You can turn around, put your feet underneath you. Anything in which your spine can be in a position that is neither hunched forward or overextended behind you. So I'll take a position instead of cross-legged, I'll take a position sitting on my feet to elevate the spine, let the hips be able to move as you're sitting and find a comfortable place to just close your eyes and take a deep breath. In through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth, and with your eyes closed, I want you to gently lift your hands up off your lap. They can be loose, they can be light. Try to help them relax to feel the space. Wiggle your fingers. You might have your toes start wiggling too underneath you, that's okay. Now, imagine that you're holding a ball in front of you and wrap your hands around the ball. It can be the size of a small melon, a little exercise ball. Rotate your hands around the ball. Feel its surface edges and then slowly set that ball down into your lap. Breathe in. As you exhale, let your palms fall open onto the tops of your legs. And we're going to repeat this. Breathe in, pick up your ball. As you breathe out, set it down and let the palms fall open. One more time, breathe in. Breathe out. And then rest.
Now as you breathe, maintaining a steady breath, I want you to imagine that you are holding something in each hand. Let these objects become heavy in your palms, like stones, like smooth, warm stones in your palms, weighing down your hands and your body. Now imagine these stones are your worries. These stones keep you grounded. These stones keep you from reaching out and lifting up. Try to lift those stones. Try to lift one at a time off your legs and let your hands press back down as though those are heavy. These are your contractions. These are the things that keep you stiff and stuck and inflexible. Good. Now take a deep breath. I'm gonna lift those stones up. I'm just gonna drop them next to you. Shake out your hands. Now if you open your eyes and follow through the video, I'm gonna begin a rotation with my fingers through the space. We're winding through the space. We're stretching the fingers in all directions and feeling free. Shake your hands again. And then take a deep breath and set them down and listen quietly while I read to you the exercise. Take up space. When your muscles stretch rather than constrict, you expand your share of the planet. You take up more space, not less. Dancers know this intuitively. They are taught to move so that every gesture is not only more precise and elegant, but bigger. We call it amplitude. It is not enough to state an arabesque with the leg. It must be opened in every direction to its fullest expanse. In order to be seen, a dancer must occupy maximum volume. You can think the same way in your everyday movements. When you walk, think of yourself striding, not just taking mingy steps. When you're greeting a friend, reach out your arm and expand into their space. To shake a hand, to give a hug, with amplitude and full fellow feeling, be robust. During a meeting, spread your belongings out across the table instead of gathering them quietly into your lap or in a nice clean place in front of you. There is logic in movement. Remember, when we walk, when we go forward, we can move backward, but we are not designed for this. Forward is our natural way. Think of all of this as your personal Occupy More Space movement. How can we occupy more space? We can expand and reach and stretch out, out, out into all corners. And we can contract back into ourselves. So imagine those stones that you are holding. Now as you're sitting, take these and just push forward. Push them in front of you like a wall and push out away from you. Isolating, your muscles might shake. Imagine there is really something heavy. Go above you, go above you. Close your eyes and push. Now reach in all directions. Expand, stretch, move, reach the whole body into your space. As you go this week, reach out and shake someone's hand. Walk with strides 
and fill up your space. This lengthens our minds, but it also lengthens through the fascia and the muscles that are around our body. As you age, the fascial covering around your muscles begins to scar and stick and restrict. But guess what? Your muscles are still there. Your body is still you. And as you stretch, as you move, as you walk, shaping and loosening those coverings will expand your body into the space. It will add fluid into your joints again. The same thing with our minds. To be present in each moment, to be content with who you are, expand this week. And remember what it feels like to boldly and intensely engage with the world around you. Thank you.